สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to h o t Thai Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own homemade sriracha hot sauce, or as most people call it, sriracha. Now some of you may know this, but sriracha, the popular one. Is actually named after a town in Thailand called s i r a c h a which is where this style of hot sauce originated. And my cousin went to school here, so he's very passionate about it. And so I figured out how to make it myself. And I don't think I will buy store-bought s i r a c h a again because this is so easy, and I actually like it better. So I'm going to share this recipe with you. Let's get started. So let's talk about what kind of peppers you can use. So the Thai s i r a c h a they use spur chili, so p r i k c h i f a Rooster Brand uses red jalapenos. You can use whatever kind of hot peppers that you like, as long as it's red. But you also want to choose ones that have quite a bit of flesh to it, because you know we want some pulp. At the end of the day, so don't use Thai chilies. However, you can add some Thai chilies if you find that it's not hot enough for you. What I'm using here are frozen. Yours doesn't have to be frozen; just mine happens to be frozen. This is actually two types of peppers. I've got some spur chilies in here, and the rest are called gusto peppers, which is a local variety that is incredibly hot. I'm, unfortunately, I accidentally mixed them. I have no idea which is which, so I don't know how hot this is going to be. So we'll find out. Now, some other varieties you can choose are serrano peppers, jalapenos, as I said, and also Fresno chilies, which are quite widely available. When I was in California, I'm going to add some garlic, lots and lots of garlic, and this is going to make it not just a hot sauce, but also a flavorful sauce. Cover this with white vinegar. It's going to take about a cup, but really, you just want it so that it's just submerged. All right, I'm gonna just let it simmer for about 15 minutes, or just until the garlic is mushy. The chilies are gonna mush pretty fast, but you want the garlic to be completely soft, so when we blend it, it doesn't have that raw garlic flavor, and also it's nice and smooth. But low simmer. We're not boiling everything away here. So it's been about. 15 minutes, and all you have to do is just try to cut into one with a spoon, and if it cuts easily like that, you're good to go. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. Is now we're going to puree this. However, if you want to tone down the spiciness of this hot sauce by removing the seeds, instead of removing it in the beginning where it gets pretty tedious, there's an easier way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a slotted spoon. Transfer the pulp into my blender jug here, and by doing this, I'm leaving quite a lot of seeds at the bottom of the pot. Just gonna pour the rest of the vinegar through the strainer, and as you can see, it's gonna catch a whole bunch of seeds. So if you've got really hot peppers, this is a really convenient way to get rid of excess heat that you don't want. You can use whatever kind of blender you have, but I am going to use my new toy, my new massive stick blender. Off I go. And try not to stick your head directly above it because it doesn't smell good right now. <laughs> All right, so just get it as smooth as you can. And then I'm gonna strain it through a strainer to get it extra smooth. Now, if you're using one of those super blender like a Vitamix, it may be completely smooth by this point. In which case, you don't need to strain it. You're gonna need to use a rubber spat to sort of force it through and just press on it. Ooh, this looks so good. And it would be easier if the size of your strainer matches the size of your pot. <laughs> But alas. Once it looks pretty dry, once you think, oh, there can't possibly be anything else, I just take a knife and I scrape the bottom. And there's always more that's just hanging on to the bottom. And then if I press it again and I scrape again, there's always more coming out. I don't know where it's all coming from. I just keep pressing, and more just keeps coming out. And you do this until you don't get any more sauce or you run out of patience. Whichever comes first. So you can imagine that if you have a really strong blender and it blends everything, it's going to be a light, a little bit spicier because you're getting more of the seeds in there. The seasoning for this is super simple: some salt, 
and sugar. Now it's gonna look like I'm adding a lot of sugar, but trust me, because this right now, it's all vinegar and all chilies, you need quite a bit of sugar to balance it out, even though this isn't going to taste prominently sweet. I'm gonna turn this back on to dissolve the sugar. Whoa. Ooh, the color is gonna darken instantly. Because everybody's blenders are gonna be different, you're gonna end up with different amounts of stuff. So you may need a little more sugar, a little more salt. So I'm gonna give it a taste. Here we go, I have no idea how spicy this will be. Not bad. It's spicy for sure. But it's, it's just right. Actually, I really like that. Mm, I'm, I will add a little more sugar, just a tablespoon. Now, a sriracha sauce is plain and simple like this. It's pretty much done at this point. It's just fine tuning. But if you want to sort of kick it up a notch and add some spices, you can add some cumin and that'll give you a bit more of a, a Mexican flair to it. One more taste. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, that's exactly where I want it to be. Just the right amount of tartness, spiciness, and sweetness, a little sweetness to balance. You won't really taste any saltiness. The salt is just there to season and balance the sauce as a whole. Mm. Oh, that looks good. I have a couple recipes you can use already. You can use it on a Thai omelet. One of my Pad Thai recipes actually uses siracha sauce. And next week, I am going to put up a awesome recipe for corn fritters that goes so well with this. It's actually the reason why I made this because I needed something to go with my corn fritters. So if you stay tuned for next week, you'll get the recipe. Once you've made this recipe, I would love to see what you put it on. So please send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and I will include a sample of them in my newsletter. If you haven't signed up for the newsletter, you can go ahead and do so on hattaikitchen.com, which is also where this recipe will be. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I will see you next time for your next delicious time. <sighs> Press it. Wait. <laughs>